Hey, Dick, look alive. I thought I was. Oh, I mean, we have a guest. Oh. Say hello to Mrs. Dannon. Hi there. Hello. She doesn't have a reservation, but I told her we don't have any guests anyway. Uh, we've only been open a few weeks. Uh, it seems longer. <laughs> That's because the place is usually empty. I know this is really short notice, but I'll take whatever you have available. Fine. As long as it's your best room. Right. Oh, uh, honey, I'd like you to meet Mrs. Dan. This is my wife, uh, Joanna. Hello. Hello. I just gave her our room. <laughs> You're kidding. Yes. yes. Uh, George, uh, why don't you take uh, Mrs. Dannon's bags up to room five? Well, how much do I owe you? Oh, let me think now. Uh, driving over to get you, and then you were late, and uh, making a couple of stops for you on the way back, and pretty much blowing the whole morning. <laughs> Two dollars. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I don't have change for a ten. Well, that's your tip. Oh. Well, in that case, you can skip the two dollars. <laughs> oh, George, uh, uh, uh... I understand Leslie Vanderkellen works here. Oh, do you know Leslie? Oh, my husband and I have been friends of her family for years. She's been like a daughter to us. Maggie Dannon? Is that her? Yes. Leslie! Oh, oh, it's so good to see you. I haven't seen you in years. I'd have known you anywhere. You look great. What are you doing here? Oh, just a little holiday. You know how hectic Washington is. Where's David? Uh, in Washington. Maggie's husband is Senator Dannon. Senator David Dannon? Really? I am a big fan of his. I think you're married to one of the most distinguished and charismatic men in America. Looks like you two have a lot in common. <laughs> uh, anyway, I needed a break from all the state dinners and cocktail parties, so when your parents told me you worked at the Stratford Inn, I just grabbed the first plane out. <laughs> Actually, it was two planes, and a train, and a bus. <laughs> I guess we're a little hard to get to from Washington. But we're glad you made the effort. I just wish David could have gotten away, too. Oh, I uh, dug out some pictures I thought you'd like to see. Uh, here's a picture of you on a horsey back ride when you were two years old. <laughs> oh, isn't that cute? Who's the guy on his hands and knees? Uh, Prince Philip. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really know him. I just wrote him. <laughs> oh, look! This is David. He was taking me on a tour of the White House. What an incredible life it must be there. Where? <laughs> Washington. Great state. Majestic forests. Delicious apples. <laughs> Not the state. The capital. Olympia, where they make the beer. One of my favorite cities. Washington, D.C. Lincoln Memorial. Washington Monument. Sailing on the Potomac. <laughs> Who is this man? Kirk Devane. Next door neighbor and... Beloved friend. This is Maggie Dannon. Her husband is Senator David Dannon. I voted for him. Senator Dannon doesn't represent Vermont. I wrote him in. I thought he could handle more than one state. <laughs> nice picture. Who's the stiff in the tux? Senator Dannon. Nice shoes. <laughs> you and the senator certainly do make a handsome couple. Uh, if you'll excuse me, I think I'd... Better go to to my room. I'm sorry. Oh. Maggie, what's wrong? Oh, listen, it's all right. It's all right. Dick. Really, it's okay. Whatever it is, it's okay. Um you know, uh, take it easy. <laughs> Thank you. Maggie, whatever it is, you can tell us. It's okay, Leslie. This is my specialty. Now, what's biting you? I walked out on my husband this morning. And? I, I think that's it, Kirk. Right. You left David. Maggie, why? Because I'm no longer a part of his life. As far as he's concerned, I'm just a useless appendage. Invisible. You don't really believe that. Oh, don't I? I left him a note this morning telling him where I'd gone and not to follow me because I never want to see him again. 
I'm just praying to God when he finds it, he comes and gets me. He's probably on his way right now. It's going to be fine. Don't worry about anything. R right. <laughs> He's wonderful. Maggie? May I call you Maggie? Yes. May I call you Max? No. <laughs> if there's anything you need, I'm just a phone call away. If you need a hand to hold, a shoulder to cry on, a warm body to cling to. <laughs> By the way, Leslie, this doesn't mess up anything between you and me. Oh, they asked me to write a description of the end for the travel guide to New England. Terrific. Now, this is just the first draft, but uh, see what you think. Okay. Nestled in a grove of majestic maples, just a stone's throw from the ivy-covered halls of Dartmouth University, lies the authentic colonial comfort of the Stratford Inn. Okay. Your jolly and congenial hosts are well-known author Dick Loudon and his wife, Joanna. And his wife, Joanna? <laughs> What's wrong with that? Sounds like in his dog's spot. How about uh, well-known author Dick Loudon and his jolly wife, Joanne? How about his ticked-off wife, Joanne? George, what are you doing? Oh, I'm going to set up these chairs in the dining room. What for? For the press conference. What, what press conference? The one Mrs. Dannon is having in the dining room. Maggie, are you sure you want to do this? It's not what I want to do, Leslie. It's what I have to do. W what's going on here? Maggie's holding a press conference. I don't understand. Well, if my note didn't do any good, maybe he'll notice I'm gone when I announce our divorce on the 6 o'clock news. Divorce? I tried to talk to her, but her mind's made up. Uh, Leslie, would you please see about the hors d'oeuvre? Oh, Maggie, divorce is so final. Uh, Joanna, this really isn't any concern of ours. At least consider a trial separation. That way you'd have some time to work things out. Th this really isn't any of our business. Or try a marriage counselor. We had some friends in New York, jo and Joanna, they went... What, Dick? Could I talk to you for a minute? Excuse me. What are you doing? I'm just expressing a little compassion for a fellow human being, that's all. Well, stop it. <laughs> Excuse me, is this the press conference for Maggie Dannon? Yes, hello. You must be a reporter. I'm Maggie Dannon. Let me get you a glass of champagne. Hi, I I'm John Fergus. Oh, I'm Dick Loudon. This is my wife, Joanna. Hello. Oh, uh, you're the people that bought the inn. I've been meaning to write an article about you for the home section. Really? Yes. Uh, can you tell me a little about the place? Well, um... It's, uh... It's nestled in a grove of majestic maples. Just a stone's throw from... Looks like you're the first to arrive. I guess the others will be here shortly. Who would that be? The other reporters. I, I think I'm it. What do you mean? I call the television and radio station, too. Uh, no, what you called is the television and radio shop, which I also run when I'm not being the only local reporter. This isn't a little small-town humor, is it? I, I don't think it is. I don't know why. I thought there would be more press here. I think for that you'd need the senator. Oh, isn't that the story of my life? Did I say something wrong? No, no, no. I think she's just a little upset right now. Maybe this isn't a good time. I've got a feeling you're right. Besides, that's what I hate about the newspaper business, writing about people's personal problems. <laughs> Thanks for understanding. Uh, sure. Well, I've got TVs to fix anyway. <laughs> he doesn't notice me when I'm there. He doesn't notice me when I'm not there. Maggie, you know he cares about you. Listen, why don't we go for a walk and talk about it? It'll make you feel better. I've run out of ways to get through to him. I, I just don't know what to do anymore. That poor woman. I know. Dick, you have got to call her husband. 
you want me to call a, a United States senator? I mean, he's possibly one of the most powerful men in the country. I mean, I probably couldn't reach him anyway, and, and even if I could, I'm, I'm not going to interrupt him and uh, tell him about some marital problem. I'm sorry, Joanna, just forget it. And as long as you're going to look like that. <laughs> y uh, yes, hello, I'm, I'm trying to get in touch with uh, Senator Dannon. Yeah, my, my name is Dick Loudon, and I'm, I'm Dick, Dick Loudon, and I'm calling from the, the Stratford Inn in Vermont. Well, I'm aware that the senator doesn't represent Vermont. W uh, would you just tell him it's about his wife, and, and it's very important? Th thank you. I'm on hold. <laughs> I mean, I told you this wasn't going to work. He's probably in a meeting. He, he doesn't know who... Yes, sir, Senator Dana. <laughs> I, I hope I'm not interrupting anything important. I am. <laughs> well, then, let me get right to the point. Y yes, I'll hold. <laughs> well, he really sounds busy. I can hear phones ringing, people moving. Yes, yes, they're still here. <laughs> I, I run the Stratford Inn in Vermont, and, and I'm calling about your wife. M Maggie Dannon, that's right. <laughs> well, sir, I, I don't know if uh, I should be the one to tell you this, but um, it, it looks like your, your wife has left you. No, no, I won't hold. I'm on hold. Hel hello. No, no I, I can't put her on the phone. She, she's out walking. Well, I, I think what you should do is uh, get up here as soon as possible and, and straighten this thing out. Fine. We'll, we'll see you then. V Vermont, that's right. When's he coming? Day after tomorrow. Well, I'm proud of you anyway. That was a strong and courageous thing for you to do. You made me do it. I want to apologize to both of you for my behavior a few minutes ago. I'm feeling much better now. I think the fresh air did some good. We've got some great news for you. Dick called your husband and he's coming up. When? Um, day after tomorrow. Oh. Well, I'm glad he could fit me into his schedule. Well, it, it really wasn't anything like that. He, he sounded really busy. Well, whether he was or not, it doesn't matter, because I'm not going to see him anyway. I really want to thank you for getting me involved in this. <laughs> Who'd like more coffee? Uh, I would. I'll have some. <laughs> I'll get dessert. Guess tomorrow's the big day, huh? The, uh, the day after tomorrow, George. Ah. I still don't know about David coming up here. Maggie, we've talked about this. It's going to be fine. Oh, sure. Men can be cruel and callous and totally indifferent. And then when you call them on it, they think a simple hug and how are you is all we need to have everything back to normal. I know. I hate that about men. Me too. <laughs> Well, not, uh, not to change the subject, uh, what did you girls do today? We didn't do anything. I cried all day. I cried at the antique shop. I cried at the covered bridge. I cried over coffee at the bakery. I ruined everything, didn't I? No, not at all. I enjoyed it. <laughs> well, not to change the subject, uh, the, the meal was delicious. Yes, it was. Thank you. Wasn't it great? They call it meatloaf. I'll have to remember that name. The best way to do that is instead of a loaf of bread, think of a loaf of meat. It's, it's so quiet here, so tranquil. Nothing but the wind and the trees. That's really all there is, the wind and the trees. Do any cars ever go by? It's really very peaceful, though. If you were sick and screaming, could anyone hear you? Well, it, uh, it wouldn't matter. There are no hospitals around here. Vermont must be quite a change from Washington. Yes, we do have wonderful parties. The best food, the finest wines. I love everything about it. Except David, of course. You don't mean that. I know. So, tomorrow's the big day, huh? <laughs> day after tomorrow. <laughs> uh.
he does have a tendency to sweep me off my feet. Who's that? Her husband. Ah. He can talk me into anything. I guess that's what scares me about facing him. If there's anything we can do to help. I don't think there is. If you could both be in the room with me. Don't you see? David is so strong. With you two there, maybe I would finally have the courage to stand up to him, but strip him bare emotionally. You know, like they do in those encounter groups where they just end up with two naked souls trembling and in tears. Well, we'll be happy to be there. Won't we, Dick? Giddy. <laughs> well, one way or another, I guess we'll know tomorrow. Author Dick Loudon and his voluptuous wife Joanne. <laughs> well, today's the day. Yeah. Honey. Do you think I'm overdressed? If you're getting married, no. Of the Senate pays a visit. I don't think there's anything wrong with dressing for the occasion. Well, look at Leslie. She isn't dressed to impress anybody. Thanks, Dick. <laughs> no, I mean, you're, you're just dressing appropriately. Well, I think I'm dressed appropriately. I mean, he is an elected government official. There are some people who still respect the office and dress accordingly. <laughs> okay, I'll go change. How's my Maggie doing? She's, uh, she's nervous. We're trying to leave her alone. We think the fewer people around, the better. I hear you. <laughs> Hello, everyone. How do I look? Like a vision. Fabulous. Fine. <laughs> he always knows just what to say. <laughs> no, uh, when David comes, should I be upstairs or downstairs? Wherever you feel most comfortable. Upstairs. I'll make an entrance. You uh, call me when he comes. I think he's coming. David! <laughs> Leslie! Is that you? I can't believe it. You're all grown up. It's good to see you. I just wish you could have been under better circumstances. Where's Maggie? Maggie? Oh, hi. <laughs> it's good to see you. It's nice of you to drop by. I've been worried about you ever since you left Sunday. Saturday. Whenever you left. I've hardly been able to think about anything else since someone called and told me you were gone. That, uh, that was me. Was it great? Thanks. David, I want you to meet some people that I've grown to love over the past few days. Uh, Dick and Joanna. Dick and Joanna. Wonderful. Nice to meet you, Senator. And Kirk. Wonderful. Uh, Senator, if you want to be alone, you're welcome to use my study. Oh, no. I want both of you in there. If you, you don't want a crowd, you know, we understand. I want whatever Maggie wants. I want both of you in there. Do you want me in there? <laughs> no. Well, into the lion's den. So, so to speak. <laughs> Hope everything works out for them. I mean, I've known them for so long, they're kind of like second parents to me. Hmm. I know what you mean. I feel the same way about my folks. <laughs> Maggie, come back to me. Okay. <laughs> Fine. Anybody want coffee? Wait a minute. I thought you two were going to talk. They, they talked. It's settled. Let's go. No, 
There were things Maggie wanted to say to him. That's right, there were. What were they? <laughs> well, that you were feeling ignored. Oh, right. I was. Sorry, I didn't mean to ignore you. I know you didn't. <laughs> it wasn't only that. You also said that you felt that he was insensitive and self-centered. Did I? Did you? Uh, well, maybe I did. Well, if I was, I'm sorry. I know you are. Who uh, takes cream and sugar? I wasn't too insensitive, though. Who said too insensitive? <laughs> and there was more. Did help me here. Uh, uh, Joanna, you know uh, how uncomfortable I feel about, about doing this. No, Dick. If, if there's something you remember, I'd really like to hear it. Well, she did, she did mention something about, about being a, a useless appendage. Uh-huh. And uh, she mentioned something about, about not, not being able to, to get your attention. I see. Oh, and uh, she, uh, she mentioned something about feeling uh, invisible. I think I get the point, Dick. <laughs> Maggie, if I've neglected you, if I haven't paid you enough attention, I apologize with all my heart. Oh, David, I knew when I married you that politics was the most important thing in your life. I guess all I really want to know is that I'm number two. Oh, Maggie. <laughs> Of course you're number two. <laughs> You've always been number two. And you always will be. <laughs> now go pack your bags. I'll be ready in a minute. I just want to say goodbye to... Uh... Uh, George and Leslie. Right, George and Leslie. I'll keep the car running out front. Okay. <laughs> what can I say? Am I a lucky guy? Damn lucky. <laughs> Senators, innkeepers, we've all got the same problems, don't we? Hey, we're people. People helping people. That's what this country is all about. Oh, thank you. Goodbye. You know, Dick, he may have a lot of faults, and I know he may not be the most sensitive man I've ever met, but I really had the feeling at the end there that he was being sincere. I'm sure he was. He slipped me ten bucks. 